Remember when we talked about delegates in the General Assembly? Well, Jonathan Jennings was one of the most important delegates in the Indiana Territory General Assembly. He represented Indiana settlers' opinions and people voted for him time and time again. Jennings was the leader of the group that wanted Indiana to become a state. In 1815, Jonathan Jennings went to Washington, D.C. with other Indiana Territory delegates to plead the case for statehood in front of the U.S. Congress. The Indiana Territory had to meet many requirements to prove that we would be a good addition to the nation. For example, the territory had to have at least 60,000 people living in it to become a state. The delegates showed Congress a census, which is a record that proved we counted the 63,000 people that lived in the territory. After hearing out the Indiana Territorial delegates, Congress decided to pass the Indiana Enabling Act, the official government document that said we could become a state. But we had a few more steps to complete first. Before Indiana could become a state, we needed a constitution and a representative government. During its formation as a new country, the United States learned that people need to have a basic set of beliefs that everyone agrees to live by. A constitution is a legal document that lists all these beliefs. For instance, you might recognize this constitutional principle. We declare that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The U.S. Congress is an example of a representative government, too. It has leaders elected from each state that go to Washington to represent the opinions and needs of the citizens from their state. In June 1816, 43 delegates met in the territorial capital of Corridon for the Indiana Constitutional Convention. At the convention, they had to write the Constitution and set up a representative government. Both goals were accomplished that summer. The Indiana Territory General Assembly became the Indiana General Assembly, a state representative government. With the Constitution of 1816, we had our first form of state government, and Jonathan Jennings was elected to serve as the first governor of Indiana. Legend has it that the delegates gathered under a huge elm tree when they were writing the Constitution. This tree became known as the Constitutional Elm. You can still find the stump of it if you visit Corridon. Wood from the tree was used to build the case that holds the Constitution on display at the Indiana State House today. Indiana officially became a state on December 11, 1816. We were the 19th state to join the Union, and we entered as a free state, which meant that slavery was against the law in Indiana. Corridon was the first state capital. Indiana had 15 counties when it became a state. A county is a separated, smaller area of land in the state that has a local government. By 1825, we had almost 50 counties, and today, 92 counties make up the state of Indiana.